scriptures, if we do not walk in the power of God, then we are in error. We are malfunctioning as a body. So we have decided from now on, Lord, we will no longer walk in error. We will no longer be powerless. We will no longer be deceived by the simplicity of your gospel. Yes. The simplicity of Jesus Christ is life yes. and death more abundantly. Yes. Yes. Period. Yes. Anything less than life, we refuse and we cast it down at your feet, Lord. Yes. And we say we step into the mind of Christ. Yes. We step into it, we yes. put it on. Yes. We choose to see through the eyes that see life. Yes. And bring light and love everywhere it goes. Yes, Lord. So for every member of our body that's missing today, for every member that's not here, we send the Holy Spirit to bring life to the door of that house and to bring life, which is Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that you have put your spirit in us so that we can walk as you. And then you give us the measure of the Holy Spirit upon us so that we can give you away. That you are more than enough for me and to give you away, Lord. Jesus. 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 I just thank you. I'm just so thankful. I thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. So welcome. And just like we do at Abundant Life, I feel like if anybody has anything they want to share, I feel like we need to open things up. Everybody can speak. Yeah. yeah. First of all, I want to say that when you, what this has all been, is a perfect example of being faithful in a small thing. God said, I'll make you faithful to the great things. And as far as what is going on, there is such a schism in the body of Christ. This one says, this one, this says, it. it's just what Jesus said. I'm over here. When they tell you, I'm over here, I'm over here, I'm over here. Everybody can't be right. There are ten different ways to Jesus. And until the body determines what is yes. the absolute truth, right. instead of over here, over there, let's go this over here. You know what? Paul said, you need no man to teach you once you have received the Holy Spirit. Right. He'll teach you. Right. What's right? What's wrong? Yeah. What's your avenue to take? And yet we just continue to want to run over here and hear what this one says, and go over here and hear what that one says, instead of spending time on our knees and seeing what this one says. Right. And I'm just saying, I'm 75 years old. I've been down this road. Do you know how many times? I've seen people want to do so many things for the Lord. And I'll tell you this. They that wait upon the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Yes. He has a time. I'm sorry. He has a time that he does things. Yes. Now, you you talk about uh, uh, an awakening. This was an awakening. Right. This was a, an opportunity to be obedient to what right. the Lord told them. Even though we don't see this massive, right. you know, walls knocked out of the building. It's nothing. Right. It's obedience. He said, I'd rather have done and sacrifice. Right. Think of that. I'd rather have obedience and sacrifice. Somehow we, we keep getting confused. We keep trying to, to you know, make things happen. I, I just was reading yesterday. The disciples were talking about, when all, when all this going to happen? And he said, the Father has in his own time. In, in other words, don't worry about it. It will happen when he determines it's ready to happen. But I believe we're the generation, and I believe not only that, that we are living in the days that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. Because you were so right, what you said, Suzanne, about, well, I don't I don't hear or see any blind eyes being opened. Nowhere. I don't hear deaf ears being opened. Oh, yes, yes. There's, you know, something over here. Yep. But people are not using the power like Jesus right. did. They're not going up and saying, hey, and you know what? We keep saying, Lord, heal him. Lord, heal him. He said, I gave you that yes. power. Yes. And yet we continually yes. keep relying on him. And I think 
magazine you just like, well, how long do I have to wait till they're going to step out yes. with the authority yes. that yes. have yes. and do it? Yes. But we're always afraid, what if I, what if I do that and it doesn't work? I'm nobody. Right. He's the one that said he would do it. Yes. Our faith better be in him, not in the fact that I live a perfect life and I'm, you know, I do everything I can. I've often thought about the people that are going to stand and say, but Lord, I, I cast out devils. I did this, I did that. And he said, well, I never knew you were part of me. And I am convinced that he's talking to people who think he owes them something because they did these things. You, well, surely I'll be right in the front row. Right. Go back to Cain and Abel. Well, in, in my mind, Cain had the great sacrifice. I mean, the great offering of the because he worked his tail off to get it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Abel, he just brought a little lamb. He didn't really do anything. Yeah. This was God. And God accepted that. What he's telling us is, I, I don't care what, you know, you can do all these things, but it's what I've done for you that you better embrace and take and constantly be absorbing that. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't, and you keep, and you rely on yourself, you're going to get fooled. Yeah. Yeah. Last night we were talking about it's finished. Jesus paid it all. So Jesus taught the disciples. Jesus taught the disciples to have faith in what he was going to do. If you read Matthew 8, Jesus was healing everybody based off of what he was going to do in the atonement. And a lot of time we, we talk a lot about timing in the church. You never find it coming out of Jesus' mouth. You actually find a lot of rebukes over the disciples saying. So Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That's his job, finish the work. He says, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, eyes and look the fields, at the fields, for they are already white with harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this is true, for the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for, for that which for you have not labored. He's talking about that he labored for. He says, my job is to finish the work of the Father, your job is to go out and reap. When sowing and reaping is talked about in the New Testament, it's that if you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap of the Spirit eternal life. It, it's about relationship. You're only going to become as much like Jesus as you put time and spend time with the Father. You're, or if you put it into your flesh, you're just going to stay calm. That's all he's saying. And that's where they, they confine sowing and reaping in the New Testament to that principle. They give it major context. Because in everything else, we go out and reap what he sowed. I don't have to get him healed. I'm, I, I, I'm laying my hands in obedience to Jesus and the power is coming through me because he put the power in. I'm reaping what he sowed. He paid for salvation for every person. I'm not sowing salvation. I'm, I'm reaping it for him. He already paid for it. He already sowed it. So if a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it produces much grain. He's the grain of wheat. But we got to get away from this thing of like, oh, i got to go sow, i got to toil, i got to... No, no, you just go out and labor in the harvest field. It's the harvest field. It's already white. Don't say. Don't say there's four months and then comes the harvest. Don't say, well... In a year, maybe I'll do it. No, go out and do it. Yes. We, there's a, I wanted to say it last night, I forgot, but there's a, we call it the 72 hour rule. If you, if we equip people and they don't go activate and live in what they got activated, and prophetic, healing, things, if they don't pursue it within 72 hours, there's a 99.9% .9 chances that they won't do it until that someone else comes and tries to activate them again. So, I just wanted to, to share that because of what Sudan was saying. It was already on my heart before we shared it. But it's finished. We just go live and then it's finished. Yes. Yes. And we go share the finished work with the world. Yes. Yeah.
person that uh, posted this song on me two years ago. Seriously. <laughs>
He's all in you. He's all in you. It's in you. The fullness of him is in you. Yeah. The fullness of him is in you. Lord, we desire more of your manifest presence in this place. More of your manifest presence in this place. What I'm seeing, Lord, is that it exudes, it comes out of those that have received you. I want to see Christ coming out of everyone in this place this morning. Yeah. I want to see him out of you. Yeah. I want to see him out of you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, I believe it's time. I want to start seeing release. I want to start seeing two of you. I want to start seeing two of you. I want to see two of you, three of you, whatever. Just the multiplication of your spirit. Just leaving, transporting from this place. I see whirlwinds in this place. Just people just blowing you around and just having a time with the Lord. So whatever it takes, I don't care. It's all about Him.
Um, if there's anybody here that has a Christian the baptism of the Holy Spirit that wants to, um, this is just part of this book of my Yes, we are in open heaven. So if anybody, while we're worshiping, this is a free space space. Please get up. We have flags, like worship. We have just a few songs left. Um, I remember when the person to worship today. This is our last time to be together. But if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you want to, please come up and Robert will pray for you. And you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, pray for you if you haven't had it. If you don't speak in tongues, if you want to speak in tongues. Yeah. Uh, that's a
never runs out on me.
this one. It's the 
the skill of the farmer. It's the skill of the farmer holding the reins that walks behind the yoke oxen. And how well he holds the plow while he holds the reins on that yoke, right? That's, the, that's what determines how straight the line is and how well his field is planted. It's the skill of the farmer, not the strength of how the oxen pull. It's not based upon the strength of the skill of the oxen. They just know to move in the direction that the yoke is pointed, right? And so that, just in and of itself, I was like, I always thought about being equally yoked. We taught a lot about being equally yoked. We taught a lot about all this stuff. So I'm just, let's just throw it all away. Let's just throw it all away for a second and just say, okay, Lord, it's two animals being yoked together. That's us and that's Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And he has hand covered the yoke for each of us to be in one with him, right? right? But it's our Father that holds the reins. Yeah. All we have to do is just walk straight ahead. Right. One yeah. step at a time. And it's no mistake that we're here in Iowa called the land of the ox, right? This is the land where people will serve, head down, plowing hard, just trusting the farmer behind them, trusting that that farmer behind them knows what they're about. Yeah. But there is no life in this land. There is no fruit in the churches in this land. So I feel like this word is a correction for us as idols. For us as the body of Jesus Christ called forth in this season right now. It's time for us to wake up and cast off yes. the former man-made yokes yes. and take up the yoke of Jesus Christ. Yes. It is time to cast off the yokes of man and stop plowing in fields that are not where God has planted us. Right. Friends, if we are weary, then we are doing it wrong. If the yoke that we are wearing right now, if that yoke on your shoulders is weighing you down, and it is heavy on your neck, and it is weighing you down, and it's too much to bear, then you're wearing the wrong yoke. So let's hear what Jesus wants to tell us about his yoke. So the two P's of his yoke. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. The yoke that we are to take up upon us is the double-sided yoke of praise and prayer. The first P is praise. And when you know it, praise is something that you're supposed to wear. Right? The Bible talks to us about praise. Isaiah 61.3 says, and this is, you know, obviously there's a whole bunch of 61.3, but I'm just pulling out, to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We're invited to put praise on like a garment. And can I tell you this in the Hebrew? This is the only time this word is used. The only time in all scripture that the word garment is this one Hebrew word. And it means mantle. It means to encompass all around about you. It means to completely encamp around and cover yourself. We are to cover ourselves in a garment, to wrap ourselves up tight in praise. It is a gift from Jesus Christ. He says, let me take away that spirit of heaviness the darkness, the colorlessness, the lifelessness, the, the, the faint weariness. Right. And let me wrap you completely round about in this mantle of praise. A praise so triumphant. A praise so joyous that your feet can't help but dance. A praise so glorious you can't help but shout that God is good. Right. When was the last time we wrapped ourselves up in praise so tightly that everything else just faded away? When we were wrapped round about with the presence of God and our eyes were just turned to him, and all we can see was Jesus. All you can do is shout, dance, and praise before him because he is worthy. That is what it means to cast off the spirit of heaviness and to put on the garment of praise. The Hebrew word garment here is H4594. I'm going to try to say it, matate, matate. And it's used once in the Bible. This literally means Jesus gave us a wrap. It's like a snuggie, right? I'm just going to call this snuggie. Jesus gave us a snuggie, right? A snuggie that we can just button ourselves up all in, right? To wrap ourselves, envelop ourselves completely around the bow. So let's choose to climb in and put it on and surround ourselves. So we camp around about ourselves with this precious mantle of praise. And this praise is the tequila. 
is the Hebrew word 8416, tequila, which means a song, a hymn, an adoration, thanksgiving. It's that new song that bubbles up in our spirit because we see something new. Every time we're with Jesus, we should see something new. We should see something that fascinates us, something that stirs adoration in us. Yes. That's the posture that changes everything, right? Uh -huh. When we praise, we are lifting our hands and we're lifting our eyes towards the heavens. Praise changes the direction of our gaze. In other words, praise changes our perspective. Yeah. Our praise becomes a comfort and a strength to us. When we yoke ourselves to praise, when we step in and connect with the Lord, we literally strap ourselves into the yoke of praise. It is then when praise becomes a mechanism that binds us to Jesus. It is a mechanism for intimacy. Just as the yoke connects two animals, making them one, as they pull together and work as one, when we praise, we are choosing to connect ourselves with the power of Jesus Christ. It is in that connection that awareness of our oneness with Jesus, that is where we work from. That is the perspective that we gaze upon him through. And that is the perspective where the power just works through us. Yes. And that is where we know the completeness of his finished work. All right? So perspective. Praise is our perspective. And the second key is prayer. And I feel like I think sometimes we misunderstand prayer. I think that we have misunderstood pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5.17 says pray without ceasing, right? Pray. Well, does that mean we're supposed to be asking all the time? Or is that just supposed to be talking? It means communicating. It means that when God, when I am when wrapped in praise, he is forever before me. When I am with Jesus, I'm having a conversation. Yes. I'm not asking a faraway God to do right. something to intervene for me. Right. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known yes. to God. We have requests sometimes. Yes. But it's to ripple it out. You know, it's, it's, to, it's to spend time together and so to have a conversation until I see how he sees. Right? right? This is still... This is the, the posture, right? The prayer is the, the, the supplication just means stubbornness almost. Like you said, it's, it's stubbornness. It's, it's coming back until I get it. It's coming back until I see it like you see it, Lord. It's coming back until I understand. And perhaps the most well-known teaching about prayer is from Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 6. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. But verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter your closet. And when you shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which is in secret shall reward you openly. But when you pray, use not being repetition, says the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. I like words, so I'm taking this to heart, Lord. <laughs> I like to pray very verbose prayers. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> be not, therefore, like them. Don't be like them. For your Father knows what things you have need of before you ever ask. Right. After this manner, pray like this. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Worthy praises to you, praising you. In my prayer, I'm praising you, and I'm turning my eyes and my perspective to you. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread, and forgive our debts, my debts, as I forgive my debtors. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That's it. That's it. That's the only prayer we need to know. Kingdom come. Life kingdom come through me. That's it. That's the prayer. Amen. Jesus didn't say, talk to me about when you're sick. Jesus didn't say, talk to me about when you have lack. Jesus didn't say, talk to me. He said, pray that your kingdom, your Father's kingdom comes. Because when the kingdom comes, everything else follows. Prayer simply means that the words that we speak Prayer are our de their declarations, our petitions.
repetition, right? It's the words that we speak. We're to be in constant communication with our Heavenly Father. And so this yoke is all about our posture, right? Our praise is about our perspective. But our prayer is about our posture. Who do I think I am when I pray? Who do I think God is? My posture will tell you who I think I am. Am I, oh, begging? Am I begging on my knees? That tells you who I think I am. Or am I declaring what yes. my father says? Yes. That is the posture of oh, telling you who I think I am. The yoke determines the posture of our neck, the position of our head and our shoulders, and ultimately the posture of our heart. His yoke is easy. If the yoke that you find yourself in is not easy, you're doing it wrong. Take up prayer, take up praise, and watch the heaviness yeah. be lifted. When that yoke is lifted, the yoke, the, the heaviness, that spirit of heaviness, when it is lifted, the yoke is transformed into easiness and delight. Together, the two P's get us ready to work with Jesus. If we don't have the right perspective, and if we don't have the right posture, we're not doing anything. We're not plowing anything. We're just working. And we're just wearing ourselves out. But when our, when our perspective and our position are right, when the words that we speak and the praises of our heart position us, then we're ready to co-labor with Jesus Christ. And only then we're ready to co-labor with Jesus Christ. And for the, the, the burden, the burden is the work. You ready for this? He told us the first bell. My burden is light. Yeah. Light. Is light heavy? <laughs> is light heavy? No. Is light even have weight to it? No. No. Light is light. Light is the absence of darkness. Light, well, light, light pushes out of darkness, right? Light is the first L of, of our work. The burden is the work that we do. The burden is the field that we're plowing. Jesus says that the work that we are to do, the burden that we are to carry, is light. This is ours to carry. Mm -hmm. Light has no weight. Light is not just being, not being heavy. Light is light. Light is weightless. The only burden that we are to bear is literally to be a shining light. Yeah. The only burden... The only work we have to do is to shine and shine. not let our batteries go out. This thing is getting never newer. To not let the source of our light go dim. Yes. <clears throat> Jesus told us we are the light of the world. Yes. Yes, Matthew 5, right? He tells us, verses 14 through 16, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but put it in a candlestick, and it gives light into all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yeah. You know what we do when we shine? We glorify our Father in heaven because he is the light. Yes. He is the light. Yes. And he gave us the light. Yes. Right? He put the Holy Spirit in us. It's his spirit. Right. But if, when we shine, we give him glory. That's the work that we are called to do. Right. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Right. This light is in earthen vessels. These earthen vessels are the light of the world until Jesus Christ comes back. So the second L is life. We've been talking a lot about life. Jesus told me that access, that to access life, you have to lay down everything else. You must lay down every burden that is not light. You cannot access life if you are picking things up and carrying them yourself. We must come to Jesus with our burdens, and we must lay them down, and Michael, this is for you, and let them go. <laughs> Michael and I, that's been our theme for like three years. Let it go, honey, let it go. Yeah. Let it go means you don't get to go there again. Yeah. You don't get to go there again, right? When you let something go, 
We are not intended to carry anything but light. If it is a worry, then we are to cast it at the feet of Jesus. If fear comes, then we are to cast it at the feet of Jesus. Yes. If a symptom of sickness or disease yes. comes, we are to cast it at the feet of Jesus. Yes. We are to lay down everything, anything that does not have light. Right. If it is not light, we are right. to lay it down and let it go. Yes. Once we cast it at the feet of Jesus, it is no longer ours. Right. It is no longer ours to pick up ever again. Right. Friends, we have got to stop being double-minded. Yes. Once we lay it down at the feet of Jesus, it is His. Yes. It is His and it is yes. finished. Yes. We lay it down, yeah. and we let it go, and it is His. Yes. And then, we can expect the divine exchange. God says, give me your burden, and I will give you mine. What is His burden? Light. 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 And light is light. Yes. That is the light of the world. That is right. Yes. We have got to give him our burdens to give his life. If we do not lay it down and let it go, then we do not have access to life. If my hands are full of worry, I cannot hold on to life. If my mind is full of fear, I cannot hold on to life. We should expect that once I give something to Jesus, when I give him my burdens, when I lay down my fears, when I lay down my sickness, my yes. disease, when I lay my finances at his feet, yes. I have the right to expect yes. life to come. Yes. Yes. And life. When I give Jesus my weakness, he gives me life that is strength. Yes. When I give Jesus my sickness, he gives me life that is healing. Yes. When I give Jesus my poverty, he gives me life that is abundance. Yes. Yes. So why would I want to go pick up that? Why do we go and grab death and try to bring it back? Right. Why are we resurrecting death? Yeah. We have got to knock it off. Yes. We have got to be fully convinced. Yes. Are you guys laughing at me? I'm fired up. Like, <laughs> this is really important. This is what I didn't even know when I was reading. I didn't know what I was telling you. Exactly. You got it. 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 We would have just been so. Preach it. This is so easy. Yes. <laughs> the simplicity of the gospel is so easy, guys. We just gotta throw it all. I just, I feel like Jesus. Here's the, the you know, the bulldozer. I saw. Okay, when I when we were preparing for this, I saw a heavy bulldozer. Lord, just bulldoze it all away. All the junk, all the the misinformation, the bad teaching, the horrible doctrine, garbage heap. Bulldozer it. Take those mountains and bulldoze them away. Out of our minds. Out of our. Just take it out of our memory, Lord. Never to come back ever. Yeah. Bulldoze it. Yeah. Take it to the dung heap. Yeah. <laughs> to the dung heap. I'm done going back to the dung heap, you guys. Yes. Light. We have access to light. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and this is the battle. The thoughts come. The symptoms come. We have got to refuse every single thought that comes against this truth. Every single thought must be brought into captivity yes. to the truth of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. And we take it and we throw it away. Yes. Because it is not light. And if it's not light, there's no life in it. Right. right. There is no life in it if there's no light. Amen. Then I will only know the life of Jesus Christ to the glory of my Heavenly Father. Right. And not only will I know the life in my life, but I will have life abundantly, which means yes. I get to give it all away. Yes. That's what abundant life means. More than enough for you, and more than enough for everybody. Yes. Everybody gets life. Yes. Everybody gets life. You get life. You get life. You get life. Everybody gets life. That is abundant life. Yes. That is the name yes. of our church. Abundant life yes. in the church. Yes. Can I tell you, we are 18 years from when Dutch Sheets and Chuck Pierce prophesied in 2003. You know what 18 means? Life more abundantly. Yeah. So God has said 18 years from the word that was spoken in 2003, release life. Yes. Now is the time yes. to yes. see life yes. abundantly. Yes. To live our name, yes. church. To live our name. Yes. Yes. Come on. More than enough. Anything that does not agree and align with life must be cast down immediately. And once again, laid at the feet of Jesus, because we are not to burden ourselves with anything 
You guys, these three are interchangeable. God said, my light, my life, and my love are interchangeable. They are one. That is who God is. He said, the fire and love of God burns in us. When we accept Jesus Christ and become new creatures, the fire of his love is placed within us. 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Do not be surprised when the world goes, Who do you think you are? Well, my posture would tell you I know exactly who I am. Let me tell you who you are. Now you can reject the truth, you can receive the truth. But I'm going to speak life. Yes. And it's your choice. Do you want to yes. just know? Yes. yes. Do, do you want to receive it or not? Jesus Jesus met people that walked away from him. Yeah. Sure he did. he did. And do you know that we should be just as devastated as he was? Because he paid for it. Yep. You know? Yeah. And you didn't recognize him. But I'm telling you, when you are hooked up to the life, to the light, right. and the love, you just go find the next one, and the next one, yeah. and the next one, because this world is full yes. of people that need life yes. spoken into them. First yes. John 4, 7 through 13, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Yep. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. I'm going to say that again. His love yes. is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. Yep. Our God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. yep. If it is not love, if it is not life, if it is not life, it is burnt up. Yes. Love. In the fiery love of God. That burns in us. That fire is the love of God. And that love is the light of God. And that light is the life of God. And that life is shed abroad in our hearts. Romans 5 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That same consuming fire. I am a consuming fire. I am a consuming fire. We need to be saying, I am a consuming fire. Yes. My, the, the love of God consumes everything around me that yes. is not life and light and love. Yes. Love, life, and life are interchangeable and inseparable. The three are one. Yeah. They are one, just as you are one with your Father in heaven. You cannot have life without light. You cannot have light without love. And you cannot have love without life. You cannot have one without the other. God is light. God is love. God is life. There is no separating these three. Right. This is the only burden that we're meant to carry in this life. The burden of life that is more abundant. Yeah. How is that not amazing? Yeah. Love fiery love that transforms and burns up everything that is not love. Yeah. Everything that's not love. Right. Our God is a consuming fire. I am a consuming fire. I consume everything that is not love. If it does not align with love, life, or light, then we are in error. Yeah. We are malfunctioning as the new creature sure. that we have been created to be. Uh -huh. Jesus gave that invitation. He gave us the invitation to come to him. Matthew 11, 28, 30, which is where the scripture comes from. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy.
easy and my burden is light. The Passion Translation says, For all that I require of you will be pleasant and delightful and kind and easy to bear. You guys, if we are bored in our Christian experience, we are doing it wrong. Exactly. We are doing it wrong. Amen. If we are weary, we are doing it wrong. That's true. If we are not seeing healing every time we pray, we're doing it wrong. So let's do it right. Psalms 55, 22. So here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord, and measureless grace will strengthen you. Measureless grace will strengthen you. That is the comforter who comes to strengthen us, to back us up, not to lead us and guide us, to back us up. Yeah. For all that I require will be pleasant, yeah. delightful, kind, and <coughs> easy to bear. It's beautiful. And it's all that we're supposed to be, all that we're supposed to bear. It tells us what to wear, to be in constant communication with him. We're called to be love and light and life. Friends, Jesus Christ is faithful. We must be single purpose and single minded. We must refuse anything that does not line up with the scriptures. He said, Learn of me. He is our example. Study Jesus. He said, My yoke is easy. Come lay down your neck and let me harness you together in prayer and praise with me. The yoke is prayer and praise. And it's the praise that connects us. It's the prayer that connects us. It's what brings us face to face with God every day to remember who we are, who he is, and who we are. Right. Because it's no longer I who live, but Christ who dwells in me. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. It's not me. But Jesus Christ, who lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The Passion Translation says, My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the Anointed One lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. His life into mine. Anything that does not line up with that is stealing and killing and destroying us. Your life and the life of your loved ones. It's creating lack. It's creating sickness. It's allowing all of these things that have no right to be there because we aren't operating on the finished work. Because we don't keep it simple. Right. We are not operating as a new creation. The new creation is the finished work. We need to work from that place, from that position. Yes. Anything that does not line up must go. We are operating from a place where there is only love, only life, and only life that flows until we remain, while we remain in that union, right? We have got to stay yoked to Jesus. Prayer and praise keeps us yoked. It reminds us, guys, we have got to renew our minds every moment of every day in that intimate union that keeps our awareness of that union connected all day long so we can cast down every thought, yes. every circumstance, every word that comes around us or in us to remember who we are. Right. And not just who Jesus is, because I have to be reminded that who Jesus is, so am I in this world. Yes. 1 John 4, 16-19. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. Right now. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. Yeah. There is no torment in God. No. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Right. It's not about us. Right. It really 
isn't about us, but it's up to us. Yeah. It's up to us. I want us to own this. We have got to own this and take responsibility. It is up to us to perfect the love of Jesus Christ in our lives to glorify God. Yes. You want to glorify God, perfect yes. his love in your life. Yes. And if I cannot see myself as Jesus, then my mind needs to be renewed. Yes. I need to put on the mind of Christ. Romans 12, 2. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. Do you want to know what the will of God is? Life. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There's no, there's no more. That's it. The will of God is life. It is. And it is light, and it is love, and it is life. That's it. They're unacceptable. That's it. There's yes. nothing else. Yes. There's nothing else. The whole, if you if you go back and once your mind is open to this, everything talks about this. Yes. It does. That's it. Over and over and over and over and over and over. Life. Yes. Life. Keep looking for something else, I dare you. I dare you, look for something else. It's life. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things in the earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Yes. Amen. God is a consuming fire. God is light. God is love. That's it. So today, I exhort you. Lord, you enter the earth. It's your spirit of happiness. Cast it off. Yes. Cast it off and put on the garment of praise. Yes. Wrap yourself in the praise and the excellency of Jesus Christ. Take each moment with prayer and supplication. Making sure that your words and your declarations of your mouth agree with the truth of Jesus yes, Christ. That is it. And if you walked in here today carrying a burden that is heavier than light, lay it down and let it go. Yes. Once and for all, and receive the divine exchange. Yes. Life and life more abundantly in Jesus' yes. name.